Hello YouTube, this is Alex from IT Lectures and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about how to implement a sorting algorithm called Merge Sort into Java. Let me start off by saying that uh, the code you see on the screen can be downloaded, the link is in the description below. Also if you don't know what Merge Sort is, uh, you can click on the link in the description below that uh, goes to another one of my tutorials where I explain what uh, merge sort is and how it works in detail. Anyway, as for the main function, I'm not going to go into details about uh, decoding, it's uh, fairly simple. I'm just going to explain to you what it does, so uh, you know if you want to download the code. Basically, I enter the number of uh, elements which I wish for my uh, initial array to have. And then the code generates that amount of uh, random integers between uh, 0 and 100. So uh, first we print out our original array and uh, then we apply uh, the method merge sort to it and then we print it out again. So we can see if it's sorted or not. Did we succeed or did we fail? So let's uh, run it for a short demo. Let the number be 10. As you can see, uh, the first array is clearly not sorted and the second array is sorted. So it uh, obviously works. Now uh, let's uh, get to it. Public static int merge sort. This is a method that takes uh, a array as uh, an argument and returns a array. It's a recursive method and if you don't know what that means, uh, basically it's uh, a method which uh, we call from inside that method, typically on a smaller array, but not always, but uh, here, yeah, smaller array, or rather subarray, but we will get to that in a moment. Like every recursive uh, function or method, uh, whatever you prefer, uh, we have to have some time when to stop. And uh, for this method, it's when uh, the length of uh, the array which we passed on as the argument is uh, 1. So then we got uh, an array that has exactly one element. If you know how uh, merge sort works, then uh, you understand this. If not, again, check uh, the link in the description below. Now, uh, in case uh, we have more elements than one. Then we have to find a threshold which we will use to divide the data array into two subarrays. So our threshold is uh, the integer n and it's the floor of uh, the length of uh, our array a divided by 2. What's that? If we have, uh, let's say, four elements, n is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, but if, if you have, let's say, uh, 7 elements, then uh, the length of a divided by 2 is 3.5 and uh, n is 3. So basically, we truncate the number, or uh, how to put it uh, more beautifully, we round it uh, to an uh, integer that uh, is not greater than that number. Yeah, that will do. So round it to an integer that uh, isn't greater than that number. Then we define two new arrays, B and C. B has n elements and C has uh, the length of A minus n elements. Now in the few following lines of code, we copy the elements from A into B and C. So first n elements go into b and uh, the second uh, length of a minus n elements go into c. Then we have two recursive calls. First one on the subarray b and the second on the subarray c. And as I said before, this keeps on happening until we have an array with exactly one element. And that's when it stops. That's when uh, we have a uh, the merge method. So here is the merge method, public static int merge. 
it receives two arrays uh, as arguments and uh, returns a single array. The important thing about merge is that it always receives two already sorted arrays and returns a sorted array. And uh, that's the real beauty of uh, merge sort. Again, you should know what I'm talking about if you don't check out the tutorial in the description below. First, uh, in this function, we make uh, a new array C that has a number of elements, uh, the length of A plus the length of B. Then we make uh, uh, an integer I, which is uh, a counter for my for loop, and uh, an integer A and B, which uh, I initiate to be zeros. A will denote the amount of elements from uh, the array A that we already passed down to array C, and B will denote uh, the amount of elements from array B that we have already passed to C. So, Alright, let's uh, check out the for loop. It goes from 0 to A uh, length plus B length, or length of uh, A plus uh, length of B. And now we have a few if conditions. First, we ask ourselves, is uh, small a equal to the length of a? Because if it is, we already passed down uh, all the elements from uh, array a to array c, and uh, then we just have to pass uh, the next element from uh, array b to array c. Then we increase the counter on B, because we passed uh, down one element. Next uh, condition is uh, the same thing, just for array B. So we check out if we already passed uh, down all the elements from uh, array B to C, and if we have, we pass uh, the next element from array A to array C, and we increase the A counter. The next condition checks out if the next element in array A is greater than the next element in the array B. If it is, we pass the next element from array B into C and decrease the counter for B, and uh, else we pass the next element from array A to C and we increase the counter, and uh, that's pretty much it. We just return C. So. Uh, that's that. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our channel. More tutorials are incoming for all sorts of programming languages. And uh, thank you for listening.